Hey guys, in this episode we're gonna be talking about the Credits Gem and how to use it to interact with Reddits in a much cleaner way than you're probably used to. So Credits is a high level wrapper around your Redis database that provides types and other functionality around those keys and values that you set. So what's cool about Credits is we can say um, we wanna have an integer and we can give it a name and that's the key in Redis and we can retrieve that integer's value and it will automatically typecast that for us. So it's super handy to have just out of the box. Um, but there's a lot of other things that it can do. It can parse JSON and store that in your Redis database easily, date times, booleans, but also it can do lists, unique lists, lists with a type of integer. Um, it can do sets, it can do hashes, it can do um, counters and cycles and enums and slots. There are a lot of cool features that are available here. And this is one of the nice things about the Redis database. Um, but let's go and install Credis and take a look at a real world example that you might use this for. So we're gonna run, inside of our Rails app, we have a brand new one, nothing in it, no models, no nothing. Um, we're gonna run bundle add Credis, and then we will run bin Rails Credis install as the rake task. Um, Credis install and what this is going to do is install a config folder for Redis and then a shared.yaml file. And if we open this up we're going to see in the config Redis shared.yaml file a typical um, database YAML style uh, configuration for Redis. Now Credis allows you to define multiple Redis databases. So if you need to split this up so you have multiple, you can define other YAML files in here and then just define that when you create your Credis um, variables. So let's go and take a look at this now that it's installed. So what's really cool is we can have a basically a string and we can say Credis and we want to give it the type and we can give it a key name and this will be like my key and s dot uh, value is going to return that value from the key. So it's going to get my key and you can see all of those commands that Credis is running with Redis. And we can then say s equals or s dot value, sorry, equals hello world. And s um, is going to set that string variable is going to set the my key to the value of hello world. So when we ask for the value now, it's going to get it and it will return the string. But what's great is we can say credits integer and maybe we can even reuse that key and you can see what happens here. Um, what it's gonna do is get that key and then convert it to an integer. So because it was a string, hello world, 2i was called on it and returned zero because it wasn't there wasn't any integers inside of that string. So i dot value equals um, five. I dot value is going to get uh, five, but we can still go back and say s dot value and it's going to give us the string five. So it's doing all the typecasting on the Ruby side and what's stored in Redis is really just a string. So all of that is very rudimentary for us. Um, as application developers, we really want the types to be able to say, hey, we can add a number to whatever's stored in Redis. Well, we don't want to have to pull that out, cast it to an integer, and then add to it. It's much easier if we can just worry about that being an integer. So this is one way to interact with Credis, which is fine, but Credis also allows you to do these types of things in your active record models, which is where the real value comes from. So let's go ahead and generate a model. Um, we'll call it user. We're not gonna do anything fancy here. Um, we're not even gonna add any fields to it. So we'll say Rails DB migrate to create the database table for it. And then we can go to the Redis docs and I'll show you down here um, that inside of your models you can say Credis underscore and the type and that will allow you to define a attribute that works the same way as that Credis um, Var variable that we created earlier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our user.rb that we just created and we're gonna say credits unique list recent searches and we want a limit of five on here. So what this is gonna be useful for is if you're building 
um, a search engine in your app and you wanna display recent searches that they made, then you can have this where we can add items to it and it will automatically create that list out for you, but it will also trim it as you add another item on the end or the beginning. So if you want to have this where you prepend all of the new items, then the ending will actually drop off the number of items as necessary. We also have this as a unique list so that if you were to um, add this multiple times, do the exact same search multiple times, we don't keep duplicates in there because we wouldn't really want that. So let's go ahead and create Let's do a route for our root, um, and we'll say searches index, and we can go into our app controllers, and we can add a searches controller dot rb, and we'll say class searches controller application controller index, and we're gonna add a private method here for faking our current user. And it will be user, we'll say uh, current user null equals user dot first. And so in our Rails console, we'll create a new user and that will have one in the database so that we will have a user um, to actually save those searches on. So let's also go and create our views for this, searches index.html.erb and inside of here we'll add a little search and then we'll add a form with the URL is going to be the root <coughs> or we can actually probably just make that an empty URL. Um, we'll do method is get and we will have a little form here, very simple and this will have a form dot search field with a query in it and we're going to display params query on the page. So let's start up our Rails app and get everything going so we can see our uh, recent searches when we add the credits um, list. So in here we can type our queries and then we can type them again and this is going to update the URL correctly but it's going to only display that current search that we have here and that's not really that useful. So to use credits here, we can go into our searches controller and we can say current user dot recent searches and we'll prepend on params query if params query is present. So we don't want to be prepending any empty items on there. We're going to um, take that and, and make sure that we're only doing that accordingly. So then the other thing we want to do is add helper method here so that the current user method is available in the views. And we're going to change this from displaying the query. We're going to say current user dot recent searches dot elements instead of this having a value it's got elements because it's a list instead of a single um, value so we're going to go through each one of those we're going to take the query and we are going to link to the root well first we're going to have the value as the query and then we're going to go to the root path with query as query and that's going to set up all of our links there at the bottom. So now test is available here. It got pushed to that. If we search for hello world, it's going to be added as the beginning of that list. And then we can say um, Ruby, we might want to search for Rails. And once we get into this, we can say JavaScript and it should um, add this to the list. But when we add our sixth item that will go over that limit, it should drop off the word test, and there you go. So this is great, but we can type Ruby again. It's going to then um, check and see, hey, Ruby was in that list. We'll remove it and then put it at the beginning. So it's smart enough to keep track of duplicates like that so that if we did type something again, it will prepend that to our list. So this is a really, really slick way of adding something like recent searches to your application.
It's very, very little code. One line of code to define that attribute in your model. And then we can go and interact with that in our controllers and views very, very easily. Now, another benefit of this is because it's using Redis, an in-memory database, if anything happened where Redis crashed and lost all this data, it doesn't really make much difference to us in our application. So that's kind of a benefit here that if we lost this, it would just clear out these things and it doesn't really need to be permanently stored. So Redis can be very useful for those cases where things are kind of ephemeral um, and don't need to be fully persisted to the database. And that's kind of how I decide, does it go in Redis or in our Postgres or MySQL database? So this is a great example of you know, a use case there. So there's lots of other things that we can do. Um, we can have other uh, types and attributes in there, but I just wanted to show you this one because in our model, we only have that single, our user model, um, that single line here that says, hey, we wanna have a unique list of searches and we're gonna limit that to five. So that is a great simple version of uh, an implementation of this. Because if you did this in your database, you would have to have an array column of strings um, or whatever type, and then you would have to go build the prepend and the limit stuff yourself. And it's great to be able to have this um, built into Redis and Credis. So before we go, I just wanna show you in the Rails logs, you can see all of these actions as they happen. So our Credis, uh, prepend is basically going to look for every item that we're going to put in the array. It's going to then take those and uh, remove them from the existing thing in Redis. So it removes, then it prepends in our case, uh, all of those new items, and then it will trim that array to our limit as necessary. So it trims it to the first five items because we are, are prepending, and if we were appending, it would grab the last five items. And then in our view, we get an L range to return that array from the starting value to the last one, and it gives us that back in our view to render out. So it's all very straightforward, and I highly encourage you to look at the source code of this because Credis is actually very, very straightforward. So if we wanna pull up the unique list example here, prepend goes through, make sure that you give it a, an array of unique elements. If there were none in there, then it's going to just skip it. Otherwise, it's going to remove those new elements you wanna add, then adds them to the beginning, um, for prepend at least, and then it trims the array as necessary. So all very, very straightforward things. And the list is actually the parent where it has the remove and prepend and append uh, elements for you. So this is a great little gem for taking a look at you know how to interact with Redis, if you find any bugs, it's very easy to work with and test and fix. So Credis is just a great gem for working with Redis. Now, um, all of these things, I kind of try to decide, are they something that makes sense in Redis or in our database? If they must absolutely be persisted, then I'll put them in the database. But if they're something that um, could go away without any harm to the user, um, then Redis is a great option for that, or they're just simple data sets that you wanna work with. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you in the next one. Peace.